Hello, friends. Welcome back to House of Tales. Today, I will be painting some gems and minerals. It's actually my first time attempting to paint crystals, so it took a little longer than I anticipated, but I'm happy with the result. I did a rough pencil sketch of each crystal study and went back in with a micron tip liner. I used a thicker line for the outer contour and a thinner pen for the details inside the stones. The reason I'm outlining before I paint is mainly preference, and also because it shows up clearer on camera so you can see which part of the stones I am working on. I've recently upsized my sketchbook. I used to only work on 5 inches by 7 inches. This one I believe is 7 by 10. I'm starting here with the rose quartz crystal. And I mixed up a dusty pink using a cool red, a warm red, and a burnt sienna color. The more hues you mix together, the more desaturated the resulting color will be. But because these two reds have a strong tinting strength, they need the burnt sienna to help neutralize the saturation to keep the overall picture harmonious. I feel like crystals are great for drawing and making art because they have a clear structure and various textures to help train the eye for detail. Some are translucent, some glittering, and these are all challenging to illustrate both realistically or stylistically. I used a fairly large brush for the size of the drawing, around 6 brush, because I want the brush to hold a lot of water so I don't need to replenish the color as often. This helps me maintain consistency in terms of value, and because I am working fairly dry, I don't want unnecessary brush strokes distracting from my crystal surfaces. I like this particular brush also because the tip is super fine. I can basically draw a hairline if I needed to, so once again, it gives me a lot of control and diversity in how I work with the watercolor. I opted for watercolor because I wanted to practice more with translucent shadows and because watercolor for me is relaxing. As I am painting, I feel as if my hand has a mind of its own and it takes over me. I follow the brush with my eyes, but I am no longer dictating where I want to work. Just experiencing this moment in front of me a moment suspended from time passing. It took me a total of four hours to complete this entire page, namely because I was nervous about messing up, so I went very slow with my strokes, and I wanted to indicate as many texture variations as I could in the crystals without losing its likeness or representation. I like mixed media paper because I usually sketch with graphite, and this paper is affordable. There are many pages within the sketchbook, and there is a bit of tooth or grain on the surface, and it helps catch my lines and shading techniques. I like the sensitivity, although it isn't ideal for colored work. I find colors to fall a little flat, and the paper doesn't absorb water super well compared to the other brands. Citrine is one of my favorite crystals because of its associations with the fire element. My energy is earth dominant, but my secondary is fire, which is why I enjoy candle magic as well.
I personally don't recommend citrine for fire signs such as Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. Because it would overload their senses and become counterproductive, enabling them to take action or be at the center of their emotion without enough introspection. I came across crystals almost five years ago in a small shop in Pasadena, California called Alexandria. Initially, I was drawn to them because of their beauty, and I saw them as jewelry or decoration for my home. I did work with crystal magic for some time, which involves programming the crystal, but I don't practice witchcraft, so the need to program went away. The first three crystals I bought myself were all tumbled. I got clear quartz, rose quartz, and amethyst. It was a while before I felt ready to invest in other crystals. I feel discouraged from collecting anymore because my most prized pieces have all been damaged or broken through freak accidents, and it makes me feel as if there is bad luck if I attempt to replace them. Lapis lazuli is not a gentle stone, so starting with a small tumbled piece is recommended. In my divination practices, which is my main form of magic, if you will, I use a lapis lazuli and I named her Beryl. She has always been quite harsh, refusing to answer questions if she senses my intentions are not in the right place, if I was being emotional, for example, but she does not mislead me. I found lapis lazuli super hard to paint because for one, I don't have the proper pigment. As some of you may know, lapis lazuli is the mineral used to create true ultramarine blue and it is incredibly expensive and rare, so trying to imitate ultramarine blue with other blues, it's very challenging. There are man-made ultramarines now but they tend to err on the cooler side and the true ultramarine is more reddish, I would say. I had a gorgeous citrine sphere that split cleanly in half. And since then, I haven't really had a proper altar because I never got over that. My rose quartz tower my only crystal tower, was damaged during an earthquake in California when I was away. So it's like all these weird scenarios that I can't quite explain or figure out why it makes me feel uneasy. So recently I've been sticking to the smaller pieces, such as tumbled stones, and small points, and it's been okay. Obsidian is another one of my favorites, just a really calming and stable presence to work with. 
I used to combine it with a penny by my windowsill and that acted as a ward or helped set up a barrier if I had two on either side of a doorway, for example. There are many different types of obsidian, which I believe is a volcanic glass. Painting a black stone meant I was really concentrating on the positive and negative shapes. Making sure there aren't too many sparse white shapes in the overall form or else it wouldn't read as reflections of a glossy surface. I used acrylic ink for the garnet and obsidian instead of watercolor. Because the acrylic ink doesn't move once it dries and provides a deeper value than the watercolor. And now we are finished. I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite crystal is if you have one or which one you would like to have in the future. Have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you soon.